What's going on, everyone? So I still firmly believe that J.J. Redick is going to end up sooner rather than later be hired by the Lakers as the head coach. Again, I could be completely wrong. This is just a guess, but it's a real educated one just based on the information that we have. And it kind of just seems like this job is J.J. Redick's to lose. Uh, Lakers don't really seem to be in a rush. And you know, you got the reports that the Lakers are going to take their time and their coaching search, which again kind of signals that it would be J.J. Redick because the Lakers wouldn't be able to bring J.J. Redick in until after the ESPN obligations, which you'd have to get through the playoffs. And then you'd have like five days or whatever before the NBA draft, or I think it might, it's like three to five, but you have a couple days before the NBA draft and then you could hire him, right? So if you're the Lakers, you're not really in a rush, right? You're not really in this position to where it's like, oh, we we have to, but like they're still doing interviews, still doing the, the process because you still need to do your due diligence. What if JJ Reddick changes his mind? Or, you know, what if you're just blown away by somebody? What if somebody comes in and they're just like fantastic, right? It's always a possibility. But I just think when push comes to shove, they're going to end up landing JJ Reddick. Uh, I don't think the other options that are available out there are like just so far and away better. Um, they're all questions. They're all gambles. It's just kind of like, which gamble would you prefer to take? And I just think like you're hearing reports that the, the Lakers look at JJ Redick as a potential Pat Riley and all that. Like, it's just, there's so much smoke and where there's that much smoke, there's usually fire. And it looks like we're ready for like a huge blaze, right? Like, and it just sounds like JJ Redick's going to be that. Now, obviously you want your head coach sooner rather than later because, you know, draft and all that stuff. But Lakers are probably trading their 17th pick regardless. So I don't think it really matters in that regard. And whoever they trade it for, because they're trying to get a star, they're going to get that star regardless. So I don't think it's something that it's like, oh, you have to have J.J. Redick. But there has been a new candidate that has emerged, uh, and that is J.B. Bickerstaff. Now, the Cleveland Cavaliers have officially fired Bickerstaff, and he is available. And now this puts pressure on the Lakers, or it should, Unless the Lakers know they're signing J.J. Redick and J.J. Redick knows he's signing. And then there's no pressure because, you know, it's pretty much already done. They're just kind of, again, just playing and showing face, right? But, um, you know, bigger stuff, guy that could easily come in. And there is a real argument for the Lakers to potentially pursue him as a head coach. I've already seen people throw out the ideas. I've already seen people say, you know, what about J.B.? Bring him in, right? He could be great. Now, as far as him compared to the other coaches on the market, he's definitely a guy that has the the most experience. He's definitely a guy that does make sense if you're looking for somebody with real head coaching experience, somebody that has been in the playoffs, somebody that, you know, has been a good, like, I don't think he's been a bad coach by any stretch of the imagination. I think he's been very good as a head coach. But is he somebody that, you look at and go, man, like that is a bona fide championship level head coach. Like that's the guy for the Lakers. That's the, the, the piece that you need. Personally, again, this is just me personally. I don't. Right. Again, I like Bickerstaff. I think he's done some great things when he was with the Cavs. I think he's done some not so great things. I think there's still some real questions of like, you know, where is he in the pecking order of, of like, coaches, right? Like, I think he's a guy that, you know, can, like, if if we needed, like, an in-between coach, sure, right? I would love him on, like, the coaching staff, right? Like, if he'd be willing to to be the lead, assist, like, let's say the Lakers do hire J.J. Redick, and if bigger staff is willing to come in as, like, the lead assistant, then I would, yeah, sign me up for that. But him as, like, the head coach of the Lakers, I, I again, I just, I don't, think he showed enough with the Cavs to make you go like, okay, that is by far the best candidate. Again, I think he has the most experience. I think he's a guy that, you know, does, that would make, I wouldn't hate the hiring. I just would have a lot of question marks. Now, again, there's a ton of question marks for all the coaches that are there. But again, to me, I kind of default again to just the upside, right? Like, I just think, to me, if all these coaches are a clear gamble, 
you might as go you might as well go with the biggest potential payoff and i think the biggest potential payoff is uh jj reddick now if you want the safe route i right if you want kind of the safe gamble where you're just basically you know breaking even or you know just getting your money i i then i think you go with like a sam cassell or again maybe a bickerstaff right maybe you go that kind of route maybe get one of those two guys you know, even a, a Kenny Atkinson, I think you could you could throw in there. Um, Edelman still is a real question mark. He's a guy that still has a it's a real like uh, you know he comes from a great you know parental background. If he's anything like his father, then you know he has potential to be a great coach. But you know, I think again, you're just kind of scouring the the coaches that are available, and it's like, do any of these guys like does Bickerstaff? a guy that just kind of jumps out to you as like, okay, he's the piece. He's the guy you have to bring in because that's the guy that's going to lead the charge and win a championship, right? He's the guy that's going to be able to manage all the egos that are going to be on, especially if the Lakers get a third star, right? There was already questions about, you know, Garland and Mitchell and murmurs and, you know, Jared Allen and all this, right? Like Cleveland's looking to tear it down. And I mean, this is a guy that, I mean, he's had success with Cleveland. He just won his first playoff series for the first time since, like, if you remove LeBron from the equation, it's, like, since, like, the 90s or whatever. Like it's been, like, 30 years. Again, if you move LeBron from the equation, because obviously LeBron won a championship with the Cavs, but, you know, outside of LeBron, I mean, Bickerstaff has had the most success out of anybody, <laughs> right? If you remove the Le- LeBron factor. So it's just, like, you know, again, he's a guy that had success. He's a guy that, you know had a lot that he had to deal with in Cleveland and then with the roster and stuff. And, you know, there was always questions with Cleveland's talent. A lot of it is young and there's a lot of upside and potential, but like there was still a lot of questions with just his, his coaching. And, you know, he, he, he really just kind of defaulted to Donovan Mitchell a lot. And it just, there wasn't a lot of like adjustment and change with him, which is again, concerning, right? It's like, what was the answer every time for Cleveland? Okay, give the ball to Donovan Mitchell. I mean, he there was the game, there was a, what was it? I think it was like game three or whatever in the first round where like the Cavs scored something like 20 points in the, in the fourth and Donovan Mitchell literally had all 20 points. And it wasn't like nobody else scored, nobody won. Like literally Donovan Mitchell took like every shot. <laughs> It was like the, the game plan was give the ball to Donovan Mitchell and get out of his way. And don't get me wrong, he was hot that game, right? Like, I think that was the game he had 50, but it's like, you, I'd like to see a little more from a coach, right? Like, if the answer is just give the ball to your best player and he'll let kind of what Darvin Ham did, right? Give the ball to LeBron and let him and everyone else get out the way and let him do what he does. I just, like, I didn't see a ton of adjustments. I didn't see a ton of improvements, right? I didn't see him game in and game out have these clear, like, oh man, like what what a great, what a great decision. What a great move. All right. And again, maybe he's limited. I mean, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and stuff, but you know, he, he's going to be dealing with egos and stuff and complications and, and Cleveland. What is that going to look like when you're with the Lakers? Still going to be dealing with a lot of those, if not more, and it's all going to be amplified. You're going to be a scapegoat. You're going to, I just, if it happens, like I wouldn't, I'm not going to be upset about it, right? Like, again, I don't think he's a bad coach by any stretch. I, I think he's a very good coach. I just think he'd be best on a, on a young team, right? Like if, you know, this talks about Monty Williams potentially being fired. I, like, I think Bickerstaff in Detroit would be great, right? I think that that, would give him kind of like the, the proper roster, He'd grow, develop, kind of do do what he does best at. But you talk about the Lakers, where it's like championship or bust. Again, I personally, again, I just lean towards take the bigger gamble. All right, take the guy with the biggest upside and the biggest swing, and let's go. Right, and then to an extent, I guess you can make the arguments kind of a you know a storyline, right? But I just. Again, if it happens, cool. I'm with it. I would love him on the staff. 
right? Like if the Lakers did hire JJ Redick and he's open to kind of returning to the bench as like a lead assistant, beautiful. Because you do need, like I've talked about, like even if you hire JJ Redick, you got to put the proper coaching staff around him. And I think like if you were to do something where you say you hired JJ Redick, and could you bring in Bickerstaff and maybe like a Terry Stout and then bring in uh, Phil Handy and let's go win a championship because we have like a super bench now at that point, right? Like I would love something like that. Because again, I think Bickerstaff has a ton of value. I think he's, there's a lot of things that he could bring to the table that would greatly benefit the Lakers. But is he a guy that you saw and went, man, like that guy, he's leading the Lakers to a championship. No, and I, and I get, like, that's the argument for J.J., right? Because we don't know, right? J.J., he, he's never, he doesn't have any coaching experience. Again, uh, if you want a guy that's just, so, if you want a guy solely on experience, then, yeah, Bickerstaff makes all the sense in the world, right? But even then, I I would almost wait for Monty Williams, personally. Um, and I'm not super big on Monty Williams, right? But... Maybe I'll save that for another video. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? How do you like Bigger Staff? Do you think, yeah, bring him in as the head coach. He's the guy. Do you think, no, like, love him as an assistant, but as the head coach, nah, you gotta, gotta kind of stay away from him. Do you think that he'd make sense, you know, momentarily? Right? Like, to me, if you were just, like, looking for a coach for the next two years or whatever until you until somebody better comes along then sure. But I just don't think that's the best approach. Anyway, I review Whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.